So China, China fell off a cliff, right? Everyone knows that, it's very heavy in the media, uh, but we're gonna talk about who invests in the Chinese market, who, who are the investors that are making Chinese market do this. First thing we're gonna do is talk about how companies are engaging in this. So does everyone, just, does everyone remember the dot com, right? Company didn't have to have earnings, didn't even have to have a product, didn't really even have to have a business plan, and people would buy their IPO. Like, we're gonna sell, I don't know, dog food, we're gonna send it through the cable on the internet, it's gonna pop out of your <laughs> light socket, and you can feed the dog with it. Oh, really, that makes a lot of sense, I'll invest in that. So here's what we have, we have a hotel group rebranded itself as a high-speed rail company. Fireworks maker became a peer-to-peer -peer lender. Uh, ceramic specialist became a clean energy group. They're doing this because those companies that are, that are perceived to be of higher value, get a higher P-E ratio, will just be bid up. Why? You said it earlier, I have a hard time stating it. It's really difficult. They're gamblers. So 80, here's the statistics. 85% of, of the market in China is uh, retail investors. People going to their stockbroker and buying and selling stock. 85%, that's between 20 and 30% here. The, um, the, the trading volume on the NYSE that's by someone like us going to a Schwab placing a trade is 2% of the market, 2%. It's like 40% in China. Huge volume and all the behavioral things that go with that. But also, uh, when you look at China versus almost any other uh, country and their, and their index, they're the highest frequency trading. They trade more quickly and more often than anyone else. They're also the lowest average ever education level. And so, so they're fully engaging their primal instincts when, they, when they're investing. They're gambling, gambling, gambling. Um, in, in 2015, and this is one of the statistics, in 2015, 66 million retail, go to your stockbroker, uh, accounts were opened in the first six months of the year. 66 million accounts and are funded and leveraged. So anything that happens is gonna be very, very uh, amplified, amplified by fear and greed. And that's, so one of the notes that came out of, out of this market uh, uh, conversation is they shut down the traders, they, sh they stopped institutional trading on the Chinese exchange when it hit 25% negative in like a two day period, right? It crashed, China said no more selling by the institutions, which is the people who would manage the money that we would have there, okay? No more trading, you can't sell the stuff that's falling. Here's the thing. They're not buying that stuff. Like when we look at our emerging market portfolio, it's down seven. As, you know, China's down how much? It's, it's not down as much. We don't own the stuff that's being affected in that way. Because they, they can see this. A pet food company trading at 221 times earnings. Sauna maker, 285. Some of that manufactures fans. You know fans? My son has one on his nightstand because it's hot. 732 they're paying $732 for $1 of future earnings. That makes no sense. This is classic bubble. Doesn't terrify me at all. Not actually that worried about it. I would, I would take this as part of the news you can completely and totally ignore. Um, the thing you might see us do is you might see us invest a little bit more in emerging markets because the panic is overdone. So remember, and we've said this for years now, China was growing at 10.5% seven, eight years ago. And China made a distinct effort. They said, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna slow down the economy. China is a massive economy. And so what they said is we're gonna target 7% growth. So what does that mean, they're gonna target 7% growth? What it means is they're gonna hit somewhere between 6.5 and 7.5, ideally. Like that's, they can't actually target, so it's gotta be a range that they're gonna hit. And they're hitting the range. And maybe they'll, maybe they'll slow it down more, but now they're saying, you know what? We've slowed it down enough, let's boost it a little bit. And they have so many tools, they can boost it. And, and we'll talk about this more in a second as well, but they want to be a global powerhouse. Ge geographically, militarily, and economically. They're not gonna let their stock market fall out of bed. It's not gonna happen, okay? All right. This is what happened, we kinda already talked it to death. The other thing about it, it was up, what is it, 80 year to date, and then fell 30. So still you're up, you know, geometrically you're up 
you know, arithmetically are 50. What, that's still one of the, it's still a top performing market for the year, even though it's so bad in July. 